guys. Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast Coffee Break Session, the show where we cover foundational treasury topics and questions in about the same amount of time it takes you to drink your coffee. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Treasury Update Podcast Coffee Break Sessions. This is your host, Alexa Cook, and I'm joined again by Craig Jeffrey, Managing Partner at Strategic Treasurer. Welcome back, Craig. Hi, Alexa. Thanks for joining us today. So today we're going to be covering what is a payment hub? So, Craig, what is a payment hub? Do you want to give us maybe just a high-level overview of what a payment hub is? Uh, Sure. Uh, A payment hub is the system that can format payments uh, and ensure that uh, the controls are in place, and it will deliver those to um, either the different networks like SWIFT or directly to financial institutions for the creation and delivery of those payments whether it's uh, ACA, GFT, wire transfers, uh, et cetera. Okay. So the way you just described that made me think a little bit of a treasury aggregator. How are these payment hubs differing from a treasury aggregator? Now, that's a good question. So the treasury aggregator is the term we use that encompasses uh, services that include both payment hub functionality Uh, as well as uh, information aggregation. So a treasury aggregator has the payment hub capabilities that I talked about. It will create payments in any format and deliver them through any channel. So you might use that on the outbound side for uh, payments originating from your ERP system or systems, uh, perhaps even from your treasury management system, uh, other uh, payables-oriented systems. So it handle you know, validating uh, sanction filters, payment information, uh, put things in the right format, deliver it, manage the confirmation process, et cetera. So that's part of it. That's the payment hub part of it. On the information consolidation or information aggregation part, that would be a system that goes and retrieves information from, let's say, for example, banks, uh, numerous banks, uh, you know, balance reporting information prior day and current day in various formats from direct connections through different types of networks like EBIX or SWIFT, uh, takes that information, reformats it if necessary, and then delivers it to the back-end systems of a company. So it could be to a treasury management system, could be to an ERP, could be to a reconciliation platform, uh, and also drop information off into a uh, data lake for use with the BI tool. So it's aggregating, it's acting as a single pipe, like you might have electricity uh, come into your house through the switch, and same thing with water. Water comes in, then it's distributed to the house through pipes. It's that, it's that main switch for inbound information and outbound payments. Okay, that makes sense. My next question was, can treasury aggregators have payment hubs? But really, the way you just explained that answers that, and the answer is yes. Yeah, I mean, we would say it's it's inherent. To be a treasury aggregator, you have to have payment hub functionality and uh, information aggregation capability. There's there's another term there, too. I, I, I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, was, was payment factory. So make sure I don't forget to say something about that. I guess we could just jump to that next. So what is a... Payment factory. Yeah, so sometimes there's a, a, a minority of uh, people that refer to payment factories as payment hubs. I mean, they, re- they think of them as the same exact thing. Uh, and there are some, there's some materials out there that uh, confuses the two. Um, and I guess we would say that a, a payment hub is, as I described it, a payment factory would be the systems and the organization that support payments. So if you have a shared service center or the new cool term is the center of excellence that does payments, that might be a payment factory. They make payments and they use systems and they have people that manage the process. So the factory includes the people and the payment hub is the tech for the outbound side. So what are some of the benefits of a payment hub? You know, part of that's if you have a number of systems that are making payments, uh, every time a new format comes up, a new payment type comes up, there's certainly been a lot of new payment types that come up. Every time there's new requirements for um, you know, validating sanctioned parties or checking to confirm that you're sending it to the right, uh, right person 
uh, you're going to connect to Swift or what what have you. Each of those connections requires changes to underlying systems. And if you only have one system that's making payments, a payment hub is not really uh, in your uh, purview. But if you have a lot of payment systems, you know, so many organizations that are growing there, they could be uh, half a billion dollars in annual turnover to multiple billions of dollars. They may have uh, 5, 10, 15, 50, or 100 different systems that are making payments. Every time a format changes, that may impact 5 or 10 or 15 different platforms. And so a payment hub acts as that translator um, of you wouldn't have to make as many changes to these five underlying systems when a change is required. You can make those changes through the payment hub. And, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to see how quickly those changes would stack up on all the systems across the organization in, uh, you know, in light of how much, how much is changing formats, regulations, different types of requirements, uh, concerns about fraud. And so this is a, this is a huge benefit because it reduces complexity and it helps you have a consistent process and it improves control. So it helps you with that flexibility and scalability side uh, as well as control efficiency. That makes sense. So then what are some of the challenges with it? Yeah, so the, the challenge of the payment hub are if you're trying to bring it in too, um, you know, too, too small of an organization, it might be more than you need if, if you only have to make uh, – let's say you're only cutting ACH payments and your system supports that, why would you stick another system in the middle of that? Um, so that can be a challenge. You, um, you, you bring it in when your, your organization is too small and there's no complexity. The other challenge is it's, it's theoretically one more piece in the puzzle. And usually when people realize they have a need for a payment hub, they already have you know 10 or 20 connections between a system and a bank or a network. And so they already have made the decision every time there's an issue, they say, uh, I'm gonna get another you know, line in, another FTP connection, I'll work out the arrangements, I'll do the test, and I'll get it in place. It's a little bit more work to get a payment hub in, and we need to get this, this new payment set up. So they set it up individually. So each is a separate line run you know, on a home run basis from the system to the bank, for example. It takes a little more work to be more efficient, but when you look at the, you look at an environment of why does someone have twenty phones on their on their desk to call twenty banks with payment information, theoretically, right? The FTP connections and formats, when they can have one that allows you to do all of them, uh, it allows you to see through. There's a lot more efficiency uh, for organizations that change uh, quite a bit, uh, have new banks they're acquiring, so. Organizations that are dynamic and have reached a certain level of complexity uh, tend to benefit greatly from it. That does make sense, too. And I like that analogy that you used with the phones. Um, so I think we're just at about time. So I'm going to do a quick recap of everything that we've covered. What a, What is a payment hub? This is really a system that can format payments and ensure that controls are in place. And this can either deliver the payments to networks or financial institutions. And these do differ from a treasury aggregator. So as we said, treasury aggregators can be payment hubs and information aggregation. Uh, so treasury aggregators, I'm sorry, payment hubs can be more, can do more, which would include sanction filters and that sort of thing, or put uh, different payments into the right formats or those, those different files. And then tre treasury aggregators can include payment hubs. So they're gonna have, again, the payment functionality and the information aggregation. And then a payment factory is also a different, it's not a payment hub. So there's gonna be a payment hub, a payment factory and a treasury aggregator. So the difference of a payment factory is that this is going to be systems plus the organization. So the factory is going to include the extra level of the people in the organization. And then some of the benefits that a payment hub is going to have is that all of the systems that are using the payment hub or if there's a format change coming up, the connection is going to change a lot more simply and smoothly because they're all streamlined through the one connection. And then some of the challenges that this could bring is it could be too big for a small organization um, and, and just too, more than what you need. And then theoretically, this could just be one more piece to the puzzle 
but it it really could be just a little bit more work needed to make everything more efficient. I think you did a great job of organizing <laughs> the various words I threw out there into a, an understandable process and uh, description. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today, Craig. Um, and to all of our listeners, make sure you join back every first and third Thursday of the month. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or just want to reach out, we can be reached at podcast at strategic treasure.com. Thanks again, Craig. This podcast is provided for informational purposes only, and statements made by Strategic Treasure LLC on this podcast are not intended as legal, business, consulting, or tax advice. For more information, visit and bookmark strategictreasurer.com.